Grace and peace to those who do the will of my Father in heaven. I have two major things that have been on my mind um, since last night, really. But uh, I may just cover one in this video, and I might make another one on the other thing later. We'll see. Uh, you might get a two-video drop today. So the first thing. FBA, this so-called FBA movement or FBA identity, is really is really just grinding my gears lately. And a lot of it is I don't disagree with the concept that black people have had a um an important role in the development in, in the of, of America as a as a nation, as a country. And our contributions have gone unrecognized. Um, many inventions, many ideas, many creative um, contributions by so-called black people have been stolen, flat out and plain and simple. They've been stolen and given and credit has been taken by other people, by the, by the dominant um, group, the the people who the European Americans who claim that they are um, they, they don't like to think of themselves as immigrants, but they like to think of everyone else as immigrants. Um, and this is according to them, their nation, their country, they built it and they're going to take it back. And so when it comes to the FBA, a lot of them, there's, you know, there's more than I will say maybe there's two camps. Maybe there's just some confusion between them as well. But <clears throat> you have many who like to mix their identity with the identity of the native native americans who were also dark skinned and they like to claim that we are not african so called fba people are not african but native american and so the issue that comes from this is that for number one, it's a complete lie. And number two, you you can't demand reparations if you were not an African descendant of slaves. If you did not come across that slave ship on that slave ship, your ancestors did not come across on that slave ship and were not slaves, then you have no right to claim reparations. But let's deal with it. All of this comes from or stems from, well, a lot of the FBA movement stems from just sim a simple desire to claim a stake in America because they want some kind of ownership. They don't, they don't want to feel like they don't belong here. They want to feel like this is their home too. And, um, and another problem with them disassociating from African is ironically that the word black, which comes from Negro, which is Portuguese, Spanish and Portuguese for black, is an identity or a label that was given to us by the Portuguese slave traders who brought us to America. Because they were the ones who labeled us or labeled the, the Negroes as Negro or black um, on um, the slave coast and in... Portugal and Spain, where there were also Negroes or black people who were, in fact, Jews, the original Jews before we were replaced. And so for you to claim to be black and try to d disassociate or, quote, delineate from Africa, you, you ironically, you are um, you're showing your ignorance and that ignorance is like. You you're defeating your your point. You don't even know it. You can't claim to be black. You, so you are you're discriminating against other people, even Africans, saying that only African Americans can claim to be black. While you yourself are claiming by not by claiming that you're not African, are completely eliminating any claim that you have to be black. Because you must understand that those were labels that were given by Portuguese slave traders to the Africans that they brought over here. 
I, I'm, I have to put African in the quote because that's not our true origin. Uh, well, depending on what you believe about the land of Africa, some people believe that Israel was really located or uh, Jerusalem was really located in Africa. And some people say that Israel or the land that we call Israel now is really the northeast um, part of the north northeastern section of Africa. It's on the same Titanic plate. So some people will say that's still Africa. So either way you slice it, we're African. So for you to disassociate yourself from that label or from disassociate yourself from Africa, you are actually removing your claim to be a black American. So we we need to get that understood. The other thing is, uh, it, yeah, it pains me to see how all these um, so-called FBA are so hostile towards non-American black people. And I understand because a lot of them come over here to America or even over there where they are and they act contrary to us. And it's not um, something that's new. It's always been sort of this sort of um, hostility between um, black people in America and black people outside of America. It's always kind of been like, especially in Africa on the continent and here in, the, in America. And a lot of that is because, yeah, there is a, um, let's say, in Israel, there has always been conflict between tribes it has always been but a lot of this is a lot of this problem is just due to the fact that people look at um they look at black as a monolith they look at black as an umbrella that covers anybody with dark skin or anybody who looks remotely african and they they don't make a distinction between tribe and bloodline. So what somebody like Tariq Nasheed likes to do is without making any distinction between Hamitic people and um, Shemitic people, he'll take uh, a, an African and or, or, or a video or a picture of an African or whatever it is and put down their culture and say that we're not the same people. And while he he is, that is correct to an extent, especially if he's talking about a Hamitic person because we're not Hamitic, we're Shemitic. That is not true in all cases because in some cases, it's just a matter of um, the, the culture is different because sometimes you take an example of a Shemitic people in Africa and claim that they are not the same simply because their culture looks weird to him or that they don't understand us and our experience here in America. We have a different experience, but it doesn't mean we're not the same people. So anyway, this kind of hostile attitude, though, really does not reflect on, in my opinion, who we are. This hostile attitude, this is the kind of stuff that you learn from the people who held us captive. This, this sort of supremacy mindset. And this is, you know, I never believed in the term black supremacy. I Like, that was always cringe to me. That When somebody said black supremacy, I knew I was dealing with a coon. But at the same time, this whole FBA thing has become a form of putting down other black people and, and for the sake of um, lifting up or just making American black people look better. So as far as black suprem supremacy goes, I will I will accept that as a as a definition or a way to uh, categorize it as this idea that there is one group of black people who is su superior to other groups of black people. And when I say black people, I'm not necessarily talking about Hamitic people. Because again, 
Negro or black was applied to the descendants of slaves and those descendants of slaves or those slaves were Shemitic people. And they know those slave traders knew who they were. They knew that they were Israelites. They knew that they were Shemitic people. That's why they were targeted. And all these things that were in history books, all these things that were documented were covered up and disguised. And I just disguised, but just hidden, buried, buried knowledge, buried information. Yeah, I'm checking my time here to make sure I still got time. So, <clears throat> yeah, these things are driving me really just, it's getting worse and worse. People's attitudes and their ignorance is, is insane. And I can see how this deception will come when people start waking up and realizing that they're actually Israelites, that the, this sort of FBA thing be, grows out of proportion and becomes um, another major, major stumbling block because these people want an identity that, and especially an identity rooted in America that they want to try to claim some of them to be Native American, which is partly true. Even I have Cher a Cherokee great-grandmother and she was dark-skinned, but Others just to who don't have that Cherokee or Indian heritage to just try to claim to be to have a, a um, an anchor here in America because they love Egypt and they don't want to leave Egypt. The same problem happened in Exodus. There were people, there were Israelites who did not want to leave Egypt. They wanted to go back. And so here we have a delusion now where people are making up these crazy identities and crazy um, theories and, and trying to cling to to the Native Americans and cling to American soil and claim some kind of um, heritage here. OK, sorry, I got um, interrupted. <laughs> um, so yeah, you kind of threw me off a little bit there. But, yeah, they they um, they want to. I'm going to say they covet, they, they covet this land, they covet America, and I'm like, let it go. Let this place go. You want this, you want this American pie so badly, but you have no idea what's coming. You have no idea that Yah is going to, it's kind of getting hot in my car, I'm going to open up this door, that Yah is going to judge this place very, 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 very harshly. He's going to give double unto her according to her works. Right, he who leadeth into captivity must go into captivity. So that's that's the second video that I was planning to make. People are going to go into captivity, and you don't want any part of what's coming. You don't want any part. And even though Christians, European Christians, American Christians know that the Bible says that, the, the, they know that the Bible says that God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that will he reap. And it says, he who leads into captivity must go into captivity. And they led people to captivity and made excuses and justified having slaves and, and chattel slaves and, 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 and afflicting them for 400 years. And they don't think that's going to come home. Those chickens are come, going to come home to roost. That's crazy to me. That's what they say and that's what they think. And they will argue up and down about that. So um, you don't want any part of this. You want to get out of here. All right. You want to exodus. And when this exodus happens, like the Bible says, nobody's going to talk about the first exodus when everybody came out of Egypt, um, the geographical Egypt. Nobody's going to talk about that anymore. Everybody's going to forget about that one because this next exodus is going to be much greater. So that's what we want to be part of. So this FBA cult, essentially, um, I, I would hesitate to get involved or to use that label to describe myself because it's a false identity and it's contrary to the most high. So I'm going to end this video there and get back to work. So thank you all for listening. And may our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, bless you.